This is the live air route map of the world. You can see all the flights that are currently in the air in real time. And notice, some planes are flying closer to the North Pole, but not a single flight is flying over, or even close to the South Pole, Antarctica. So why has this continent been abandoned by the aviation system? Is there any mystery that we don't know? Let's find out in this video. If you take a flight from Buenos Aires Airport of Argentina to Australia's Perth Airport, its air route is supposed to go through the middle of the South Pole's airspace. But in reality, there is no such route like this. In fact, other routes for commercial flights like Auckland to Johannesburg or Buenos Aires to Melbourne also pass quite closer to Antarctica. That's why there's no direct flight on that route either. But the situation was not always like this. There's a tragic story behind this system. In 1979, a New Zealand-based airline, Air New Zealand, decided to fly a new tourist special flight to explore the scenic beauty of Antarctica due to growing tourist interest. These flights offered passengers a rare chance to view the South Pole's breathtaking landscapes from the air. As a result, the service started and on November 28, 1979, Flight TE-901 was scheduled as the season's final trip, carrying 237 passengers and a crew of 20. Captain Jim Collins, First Officer Greg Casson and Engineer Gordon Brooks were leading the flight. Despite their experience, Collins and Casson hadn't flown a sightseeing trip before, while Brooks had limited Antarctic flight experience. Before this trip flight, the crew only had a briefing of three weeks because no cautionary issues were reported on previous flights. Taking off from Auckland at 8 o'clock NZDT, the aircraft, ZKNZP, followed its standard route towards Antarctica, flying over Victoria land and reaching McMurdo Sound by midday. There were some concerns about the weather. A break in the clouds allowed the crew to descend to 2,000 feet for a low fly past. They also radioed McMurdo Station's air traffic control at 12.45 NZST about this. But that was their last communication with the control room because after that, everything went horribly wrong. Within five minutes, ZKNZP crashed into the side of Mount Erebus on the South Pole at 1,467 feet altitude, killing everyone on board. Now, why did this incident happen? Due to a misunderstanding about the flight path, untrained crews for flying in the polar regions, and some other important factors that we will talk about now. No matter how much scenic beauty you get here, Antarctica has an extremely harsh weather condition. The strong winds and heavy snow make it difficult to see, which leads to whiteouts where the visibility for the pilots is unclear. On top of that, there is hardly any scope for landing in Antarctica in case of an emergency because, on the ground, it is the freezing temperatures and rough, mountainous terrain which isn't suitable for landing planes. For all these reasons, in March 2001, the FAA created special rules for polar routes. For any plane or vehicle flying above 78 degrees north or below 60 degrees south, in the rules, it was mentioned that for Arctic conditions, special training is required and maintaining equipment is essential. The flight crew must have at least two cold-weather anti-exposure suits. In addition to that, there should be secure FAA approval for emergency alternate airports and evacuation plans. Plus, while flying over the Antarctic region, pilots must monitor fuel temperature closely to prevent freezing, and they might have to rely on charts manually with true heading because magnetic in the polar region readings become unreliable. In fact, the Earth's South Pole has very strong magnetic fields that keep changing constantly. To your surprise, these changes can move the magnetic field by miles each year. This is a big deal for pilots because it can affect their navigation. If the magnetic field moves, what pilots see as true north might be different from the actual true north. Naturally, this makes it hard for them to find the correct runway. This is also the supposed reason behind the 1979 Air New Zealand crash. Now, many of you may not know why True North is so important for pilots. Runways at airports are named based on their direction relative to the True North. If a strong magnetic field, like the one at the South Pole, shifts significantly, pilots might have to adjust their navigation. 
Most importantly, because runways are named according to their direction in degrees from true north, any changes in the magnetic field can lead to the renaming of runways. A small difference of a few degrees might not seem like much, but it can have serious consequences. So, this kind of shift of magnetic poles or incorrect renaming of runaways can lead to confusion about whether they are heading toward the right runway. And such confusion can cause flight delays, hard landings, and even sometimes crashes. Although such situations are rare, they can be very dangerous. This is why it's a good idea for pilots to avoid flying too close to the poles and these strong magnetic fields. But if you think you have got all the answers in this video already, wait. We're just halfway there, and here the story takes a slight turn. While the additional rules might discourage routes over Antarctica, they wouldn't completely prevent them. In the Northern Hemisphere, commercial flights often follow all these rules quite strictly. But you know what? A couple of major routes like Dubai to Los Angeles, New York to Hong Kong, and New Delhi to San Francisco save hours by flying over the North Pole. This is because the Earth is spherical, allowing for shorter paths. But isn't it dangerous to fly over Antarctica? Yes, it is. But the challenges of flying over the South Pole involve more than just its polar nature. One significant issue is related to commercial twin-engine planes and their operational limitations also. Every twin-engine aircraft has a defined rating for the maximum distance it can fly from an alternate airport designated for emergency landings if needed during a flight. There's a technical for this kind of airport to suitable diversion airport. And this essential rating ensures that in case of an emergency, such as engine failure or running out of snacks, there is always a nearby runway available for an emergency landing. This is known as the ETOPS, or the Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards Rating. It is measured in flight time. Before 1985, all twin engine planes were limited to ETOP 60, meaning they had to stay within a 60-minute flight radius of a suitable diversion airport. It simply means that before 1985, the routes of every flight were so designed that any time during mid-flight, it could reach any alternate airport for emergency landing within just 60 minutes. Later, as aviation technology advanced, ETOPS ratings increased. Nowadays, most common commercial planes like the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320 can achieve ratings up to ETOPS 180. The longest range commercial aircraft, like the Airbus A350, has a maximum ETOPS rating of 370 minutes. With this kind of higher rating, they can literally cover 95% of the globe, only with the notable exception of Antarctica because there is no suitable diversion airport for landing there. The closest potential diversion airport to the South Pole is Ushuaia International Airport in Argentina, which is about 4,000 kilometers away. If we calculate the flight time, that will be more than four hours. That's how remote the South Pole is. As you can see, there's no point in flying over Antarctica. Despite these restrictions, an airline could theoretically route a flight over part of Antarctica with the right plane, equipment and specially trained crew. However, practical routes over Antarctica are rare. Most international air routes are in the Northern Hemisphere, which contains 90% of Earth's population. Some flights, such as those between Sydney and Johannesburg or Santiago, come close to the Antarctic coast and might occasionally fly over a small part of Antarctica depending on wind conditions. However, none of these routes go near the actual icy continent. So, have you ever experienced a polar flight? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more interesting insights.